Welcome back everyone, Dustin here again, Average Guy Hi-Fi. I've got a, a kind of another beginner's guide for you guys. This was a really good opportunity for me to um, pull all my gear out, uh, get it all reorganized because I added a new power conditioner. So I ended up picking up a uh, Panamax M5400PM. Obviously you guys are probably familiar with my uh, Lexicon RV6, but I also ended up picking up a monolith uh, five channel amplifier too to add to the system. So this was a good opportunity to try to pull everything out of my uh, trusty TV cabinet there and then get it all hooked up. But before I put it back into place and everything, I figured I would just kind of show you guys the setup process of getting it all hooked up here. Um, again, a beginner's guide. This is kind of modern equipment, so it's HDMI, stuff like that. So pretty easy, but just figured it'd help a little bit. And uh, the other uh, pieces of equipment are my um, Panasonic DP UB820 Blu-ray player, my Xbox. I have a SVS sound path that I uh, have hooked up to my SVS SB4000. Then I also have a Logitech Harmony. So I'll just kind of show you guys uh, me getting all these things plugged in here. I got the light, so it should be it should be pretty good to go. You guys should be able to see me kind of go through the process, but there we go. And then obviously the big kind of tangle of cords and everything that I have around here. This is all the cords that are required to get all this stuff hooked up here. So we'll just jump right into it. I will uh, put the, um, the camera behind me here and I'll just show you guys uh, me plugging everything in and then kind of walk you through it as well. All right, I think this is a pretty good angle. I'm not gonna show you guys me hooking up the power wires. Those are pretty self-explanatory. But again, the purpose of this video is just to help uh, beginners out there kind of understand how to hook things up. Mainly, um, the receiver and the amplifier. I see people asking that question all the time. So the first thing you wanna do if you wanna add a amplifier to a receiver um, is make sure that it has um, preamps. Uh, basically, like uh, it sends, that way you can bypass the internal amplifiers, which is what the speakers are plugged into here. So it would send the signal to external amplifiers, but it's a real easy connection. Um, some receivers, real high-end processors, things like that which will have XLR, which is another way of doing it. This amplifier was one of the monolith refurb, so it didn't come with XLR inputs. So not a big deal. I wasn't too concerned about it, but I'm using MediaBridge um, RCAs here. These are just little four footers, which is plenty for the link that I have there where the stuff goes on under my TV that you guys are probably familiar with. So the, we'll just start with this, hooking the receiver to the amplifier. So we take the RCA and we plug it into, these are labeled differently for different manufacturers, but it pretty, should be pretty similar. We have FL for front left speaker. We have SL for surround left speaker. We have center channel. Um, then we have surround backs for left and right, but I'm only running five channels here. It's only a five channel amplifier. Then we have uh, FR for front right speaker, SR for surround right speaker, and then a subwoofer. So we'll just go from the first one, which is front left. and we'll plug it into the left on the amplifier. And then we'll do the same thing kind of five different times here. So we'll take the other wire, the surround left, and we'll plug it into the left surround on the amplifier. Then we'll go for the center channel. Obviously, plug that one into the center channel. Then we'll go um, front right speaker. into the right speaker. Then we'll go surround right into the right surround. So there we go. There's five RCA cables. Right now it's just bypassing the internal amplifiers on the receiver. So the next step for you would be to hook up your uh, speaker wires. I'm using, again, Media Bridge. That'd be great if they sponsored my channel. <laughs> I buy so much of their pro uh, products here, but um, I got them color-coded too. This just makes life easier. I just bought a sheet of those kind of color-coded uh, stickers, and then I have it hooked up the amplifier. That one I'm crawling around back there. I did the same thing on the receiver, even though I'm bypassing the um, internal amps here. So we just take the speaker wire and we plug it into the amplifier. Red into red, black into black. And then you would just, real simple, I know a lot of you guys know this type of stuff, but then you would rub the other end of the speaker wire to the um, speaker itself. And then we just do that over and over again. You know, you take the, depending on what it is here, if the center channel, you put the center channel in there, red to red, and then to the black. Pretty easy stuff there. 
So the next step would be hooking up the HDMI cable. So the main one, this one has output number one, which is ARC capable. These, um, you want to check your manuals, how to hook these up. Sometimes they're a little bit different. Um, but basically some receivers and processors have HDMIs that are different capabilities from each other. So this one's pretty easy though. I just took output one that's ARC compatible. And then this end would go to my TV. So it's just one wire. Uh, my TV is eARC. This receiver is an eARC, but it's not really a big deal. And that stands for audio return channel, by the way. And then it's, again, this uh, HDMI has made life pretty easy. So then I would go for my game plug the HDMI cable in there, and then I hook it up to my HDMI out. It says to the TV, but obviously we're going to a receiver first. And then I would go uh, BD for Blu-ray, and I would hook, the, hook this up to my Panasonic to the video audio out. Pretty easy there too. So again, HDMI is a really simplified thing. So. The other things that I would kind of show you are the SVS sound path. I ended up purchasing this. I'm not sure if you guys want me to do a review on it or not, but it comes with a receiver and a transmitter. The transmitter sends the signal to the receiver. So on the receiver end, you would take the, comes with a little cable here, just like a subwoofer cable. You'd plug the um, RCA into sub one on this one. This receiver has two subs, but I'm only running, or two sub outs, so I'm only running one sub. So. You just plug that little guy in there, and then you would just plug in the power, which is a little kind of mini mini plug there. And then this would send the um, subwoofer signal to the subwoofer itself, and then you would plug the subwoofer in, and then um, this would receive the subwoofer signal. That way you don't have to run very long kind of uh, cords or anything like that. So again, some of this stuff is pretty easy, but I figured this would be a nice visual guide for some of you that are, you can, you can get a little bit frustrating because you can read online so many different things and, um, there's just so much information out there and some of it I've noticed to be wrong. This is just a real simple way of doing it. If you have more complex uh, audio equipment, uh, if you're running coax cables, things like that, then it can get a little bit more confusing. But my, I like to keep my system pretty simple. So there we go. That was just kind of a rundown there. And then after this, I'll show you guys, once I get all this heavy, expensive equipment kind of lugged into place there, I'll show you it all turned on with the blue lights and everything to let you guys know that I did it correctly. Stay tuned. All right, everyone. Well, it took a little bit of lifting. That amplifier weighs about 80 pounds, but got the TV stand back in place, got the receiver, everything all hooked up. Uh, sounds good. Uh, speakers are all working. So I just wanted to kind of show you. By the way, if you guys haven't seen um, The Hobbit, kind of the 4K disc, it's stunning. The picture quality, the sound, everything. So I ordered. It's a tough pill to swallow. You know, they've kind of float around that $80, $100 range for a three-piece disc, but totally worth it. I was on the fence for quite a while, but definitely love the visual quality and everything of it. So there we go. There is the um, Lexicon RV6 receiver. We have the uh, AC Infinity T10 fan on top of it. We have the Xbox. We have my um, Harmony hub there. The SVS sound path is just behind there. I chose just to hide it in the back there. Uh, there's the Panasonic Blu-ray player, the Panmax uh, power conditioner. The new edition, the Monolith 5, I'll be doing a review on this one. Probably going to run it up against uh, maybe my Marantz receiver or something like that and see if you can really tell a difference or if I can tell a difference running a power amplifier versus a receiver. And then obviously the other uh, T10 fan there. So really happy with the way it turned out. I got to get it all fine-tuned and everything, but that's just a part of, the, part of the process. Anytime you add something new into your system like an amplifier, um, new speakers, things like that, you always kind of want to recalibrate it and make sure it's... Uh, functioning at its best. So that'll be my next step here. But again, this was kind of a, you know, some of you guys know this stuff already, but this is pretty much a beginner's guide. I felt like this would be helpful for people out there that are just uh, confused with terms like HDMI, HDCP 2.2, um, all of those type of things. So hopefully this kind of connection guide will uh, sort, sort things out for you guys so you can enjoy your home theaters. Again, my name is Dustin. The name of the channel is Average Guy Hi-Fi. My next reviews are going to be for my um, SVS SB4000 that I mentioned already. And then I still really need to kind of dig into Dirac um, to figure out this new receiver. But I just love it out of the box. Still got some wires and stuff back there. But I'm particular about that, so I'll be working on that as well. But there you guys go. Kind of got it all set up, and it sounds good so far. Now it's time to calibrate.